Um, please drop off the call now. Uh, so there's all our disclaimers about privacy and everything on this meeting. Um, keep to yourself. Right. So uh, welcome to On Point. Can't remember which episode we're up to. I think it's about 11. So as per always, I will quickly rush through uh, news and surface. Um, then I'm going to throw across to Sergio, so I'll do an intro then, um, prizes and Q&A. So coming up, uh, Dick Data, uh, this would be a good reason to get you down here, Sergio, is TechX. Uh, so in Auckland only, if you click on that slide, it will take you through the registration page. Um, so some good swag of bags there to get. Um, we will got Inspire coming up in two weeks' time, I think it is, plus also the modern work um, sessions where you can join uh, Microsoft. Uh, down the viaduct in Auckland or down in Wellington. So once again, click on that link and register to go along and uh, watch the keynotes in person. Something from last week's um, presentation about is there a virtual desktop and the, the questions that always come up around how we choose Windows 365 uh, versus is there a desktop and looking at the numbers for New Zealand, we don't have a lot of uptake on Windows 365. So this decision tree from Nerdio, along with a whole lot of uh, costings on different scenarios is available on that uh, white paper that's uh, through from Nerdio. Um, with uh, Surface, if you're um, still interested in, in registering for Surface and getting access to some uh, demo gear, so I'm guessing it's around about was it about 30 uh 30 off what the the normal buy price is for your demo gear um click on that and get yourself a um surface so you can demo it and uh, sell some to customers okay so across to sergi um i met sergi what about two and a half years ago um i didn't realize how impressive your uh, cv is mate it's, it's it's huge so you are really putting the um V in the Microsoft um, MVP piece. Um, I'll let Sergi explain uh, some of those certifications he's got around the offensive um, security um, experience and pen testing. But from our perspective, you know, we spend a lot of time talking about defending. So Sergi can give us a sort of like glimpse into the mind of the attackers, um, and that that's going to make us stronger defenders. Um, and I'll let you uh, grab the slides and and go from there, Serge. Uh, yeah, sure. Honor to have you uh, on, the, on the call, mate. Nice. So I think uh, there are no slides, no any other slides, just just this one. And so um, yep. after that, I can I can just share my screen. Uh, so yep. good morning, good morning, uh, good morning. Uh, again, thanks, Paul, for the for the for introducing myself for 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 introduction. Uh, so. Um, I don't think you are interested in my my certifications because yeah I have many of them. Uh, the most important how I how I can help you uh, is that I prefer live demos, so I really like to show demos, not just you know, not not, not only slides. Uh, and I I also know quite quite pretty well the offensive part. So how to like how to do a pen test, how to compromise things legally, of course. Um, and uh, what I usually do when I work my, my, with my customers, quite often they ask questions like, all right, so can you just show me the proof that this system can really protect me? So um, not, not, just, not, not by showing the slides, but uh, can not really protect our company from the real attackers. Um, and so uh, what we do, uh, we like implement system like a test, uh, like like a pilot pilot. Uh, we implement like a, like a pilot and then we try to uh, compromise the, like a typical, typical, typical workstations and see what, what's going on on the system side. So we test it together uh, and see like how, how it's working. Um, and quite often it, it, it looks pretty impressive. Uh, because yeah, it really can catch many attacks, uh, in, even advanced attacks. Because sometimes we even bypass antiviruses. Um, we do something like you know that the, the company may also have protection like AppLocker, and we still can bypass that. Uh, we, we can bypass that, but 
uh, it still can be detected by uh, by defender of endpoint, by Sentinel, of course, and when they when they are combined together. That's what I want to do here. I want to show you a couple of my demos uh, shortly, uh, but uh, it will be it will be done on my demo environment. Uh, but it should be also quite should be quite informative. So what do I have here? Um, I'm going to share my screen. Can you see my screen right now? All good. Yeah, nice. So, so yep. Yeah. So that's that's my Linux machine. Uh, it's like an attacker machine. Um, and in parallel, I have like a like machine of user that will be under attack. Uh, on this machine, I have antivirus, which is McAfee antivirus. Come on. Um, and so antivirus is turned on except VPN, but who cares about VPN? So everything is working. Should be at least. Um, and so what I want to do now, I want to make a quick simulation. Let's say attacker. Uh, send something, um, some payloads to the user workstation. The user download that. So I already I already downloaded the from, from the mailbox. Um, and so that was that's that's the file like uh, in Excel format. Please enable macro so that we need to we need that to calculate your discount. So we try to convince user to enable content. Quite typical thing. So let me click enable content. And we have a discount. Quite nice, quite nice numbers, 30%. Uh, but what ha what happened in parallel? So attacker has what's called shell, uh, reverse shell, like what like we called in cybersecurity. Uh, so now attackers they have access, remote access to user machine, and as the result, to the whole infrastructure, because now we have access to what the same we have the same level, level of access that user has. Um, so usually in the in the real world. Attackers then uh, configure persistence, like in case of user reboot the workstation. Uh, but I'm quite limited in time. I just want to show you the like some other uh, some other steps. So I'm gonna avoid persistence and just jump to the next step, which is called reconnaissance. Uh, by the way, uh, all of those steps you may find in uh, uh, in a framework called Mitre Attack. Give me a moment. I'm gonna show you that real quick. Uh, my attack. Uh, if I go to here, uh, so after I got initial access, uh, it may be like configured persistence, previous collation. Uh, so what I want to do, I want to, uh, in discovery, discovery. So what I want to do, I want to gather more information from the from the workstation and from the network to find out where can where can I get more more permissions, where I can get more more interesting information. And the first I want to check is who am I? So very simple, just who am I? So I'm user JDOM. That's what attacker do. So when they when they got got access, they want to know who they are. So let's see what kind of permissions I have if I say who am I slash groups. All right, so I know that I'm I'm a member of remote desktop users. I'm not an administrator. I'm just just a regular user. OK, um, so this user is not an administrator. So let's take a look. Maybe there are some other users on that machine. Let's say net user. And I can see there are other users like a uh, user with my name, uh, guest user. And, and that's it. All right. <laughs> Nothing. Uh, what I can also see that this user is the mem is the ma the main member. So maybe I can find some other users in the main. Let's say net user uh, slash domain. And so look at this. Uh, we can see trainer 
Harney, M. Smith, Jada, and so that's Jada, the main user, and Sergey again. So we can see that there's this user the, the, is the main member. Um, hmm. And we can see the main the, the, the main users. Maybe we can check also groups and find out who has permissions on that machine and in general in the main. Let's say net local group and, and find out that like a set of groups. Then let's say net local group uh, administrators. And now we, we can see um, members of local administrators groups. So help desk and Sergey. By the way, just in case, what I'm doing right now, uh, like it, um, if you think about hacking like uh, something from movies, like someone in the in next minute after after initial compromises start to get more information and access the database, it, it is not really true because uh, attackers they need to figure out what's going on in the network, uh, where are important resources, where where can I get more privileges? So in the beginning, they must gather information. That's what I'm doing now. I'm trying to understand uh, about the network environment, uh, about like other users, about permissions, about network. I will do some other things soon. So I can see that uh, local groups, let's see the main groups, net group. Uh, oh, sorry, net group slash the main. All right, now I can see the main groups. That's let's see net group. Um, the main admins. That's the most important group for me. The main. Um, and I can see that uh, the main admins uh, are Sergey and trainer. All right, what what else I can I can check? Uh, let me find an article uh, called Windows Elevation of Privileges um, and on this website. And so on a step zero, when I, when I, when I make a reconnaissance, what I can find. Uh, so net users, I tried, net user administrator, IP config all. Let's see uh, about configuration of the network. Then uh, let's see routes. And ARP table. So we got some information. Uh, what else? Netstat. Um, all right, and and firewall configuration as well. Net, let's the net 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 firewall show state. Um, that's enough. That's enough here. Uh, next, uh, let's try to elevate our privileges. Which uh, we gather some information. We we realize with just the regular users, um, we hear um, nothing really interesting. Nothing really interesting here. Uh, in uh, Netstat and IP configuration. Of course, you can we can try to find out other workstations, file shares, but again, let me avoid that because it will take a while. Um, so let me try to elevate my privileges um, and find clear text passwords. So I'm going to click clear te text passwords. To be fair, it will take a while because that's quite heavy output. So th through the shell, it will, it will be pretty slow. So I'm going to open CMD locally. Um, and, 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 and let me go back and try to make a search for passwords. Um, so the first el elevation method, when I want to become administrator, the most simple way, what I can try is to find passwords on the disk, uh, in, and in the registry. So before we start to, to compromise something to elevate, maybe we can just try, maybe we can just, just find the plain text passwords. Um, usually, when in the in the real world, that's that's the first thing we do. Um, and let me just try to copy. I, I know it's pretty heavy output. Um, nothing was found. Uh, let's try to find in all files.
Uh, nothing. And let's try a registry. Nothing. Nothing. Um, the last one. All right, so um, I didn't find anything. So that was the preparation phase. Um, and like after after I compromise uh, the machine. So um, I would I would like to stop here. Uh, I would like to stop here. Um, and oh, uh, for if uh, because you will not hear from me uh, soon, so I would like to get some credentials anyway. So let me do it. Um, let me quickly elevate my privileges um, and uh, dump uh, the process with uh, where I can find ad admin credentials. So let me do it real quick, um, and then I, I will show you what we, what we can find in Defender. Um, one moment. Uh, one moment. I'm going to find the right command for it. So, Sergi, this was looking for credentials that are on disk or in registry, not in memory. Yeah, exactly. So, if if something like passwords may be stored on the disk, uh, you know, the users may create the text documents with passwords, or maybe some some programs may store uh, passwords in the plain text in in the registry. And and I'm looking for that. Um, maybe I could uh, maybe I was able to find anything and just elevate immediately, um, and find in the plain text. Would that uh, so, include um, browsers uh, caching credentials and passwords? Yes, exactly, exactly. Also in a browser, um, in the browser, um, and like some programs like Pytty, you can see here. I'm using Pytty, and also like Pytty sessions, they may store credentials in memory. So number of hives that will be checked. Uh, now let me try. Uh, let me try one thing. Let me try one thing. Uh, so I would like to, I would like to, uh, check, oops, sorry. Um, uh, one moment, I'm going to use full command. I would like to check what kind of services, uh, available on the on the workstation because one of the elevation one of the way one of the ways to elevate one of the ways to elevate is to find incorrect permissions in services. So what I want to do, I would like to see if any services uh, they may have incorrect privileges, and if I can control service and service work on behalf of the system of local system, uh, I may try to elevate. So the typical. Uh, so for these purposes, we must find services not from Microsoft because Microsoft services they are pretty fine. And so when I when I run the script, that, that's my own script, and this script shows me all services, uh, not not committed, not not by Microsoft. One of them called Ubiquity Ubiquity Networks. The most interesting, this service uh, stored in unif in pro under program data, uh, which is a writable folder for any user. So maybe, maybe I can control that binary, maybe. Um, and so maybe I will be able to elevate. So let me check that. Let me check that. If I go to, um, uh, program, uh, data and see unify video, um, I can try to create something here. And yeah, I, I can I can write this folder. So for the sake of time, let me show you the pro, uh, the one the problem with this with this with this service. So uh, the problem with this service that developers when they develop this service, they forgot to remove from the code temporary part. And so when you place the binary called taskq.exe and restart the service, it will be executed on behalf of the program. And so because program work on on the, uh, with the system privileges. 
your binary will be executed with system privileges. That's the way how can we try to escalate. Um, let me quickly do it. Um, and that will be the end of the de offensive demo. Um, and then I will show you uh, what what was detected by Defender. Oh, that's that's the wrong one now. Um, not, not, that's what, not what I want. I want to have a different one. All right, so and finally, if I uh, configure new listener, fourth five 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 five. Um, and so I cannot, to be fair, restart the service. So I cannot stop the service because I'm a regular user. There, there are no permissions to do it. I can reboot the workstation. But let me just for the sake of time, ju just for simply, just to make it quicker, I want to uh, open CMD as administrator. And not stop. So it should stop the service. And fingers crossed, uh, give me admin shell. Yep. Uh, and who am I now? Administrator. Last step, uh, last step, I promise you. Um, I want to dump uh, the process called LSAS because this process, uh, this process, uh, cache credentials for, for all users that work on this workstation. And I can I can dump the process with a tool called pros dump, pros dump. Um, so I'm gonna say pros dump, accept you will run, and process will be Elsa's, and the output will be Elsa's the DMP. Access the night. Uh, that, so that was an antivirus. Um, antivirus blocked my attempt. To be fair, what I can do. So what what I can do um, on this workstation we have Defender. Defender antivirus. What I can try to do, I can shut, uh, I can remove Defender. Um, not, not, not Defender itself, but I can remove Defender signatures. And I will be able to, to do what I want to do. So let's say MPCMD. I think that's the right name, MPCMD. Let me double check. MPCMD run. And PCMD run, CMD run, and uh, remove definitions and minus all. Yeah. So now if I try to go back, let me try to go back um, and CD into this folder. And try again, cross dump. Yeah, I was able to dump the process where credentials are stored. And if I copy this LSAS.dmp to my workstation and open it with a tool called Mimikatz, I will be able to find credentials of maybe administrator or some other users. All right, so now, now uh, from here, um, oh, damn it, let me log into uh, the service. Uh, from here, I would like to log in finally to um, our service. Yeah, dump, dump, dump was completed. So uh, I dump credentials from the process, and and again, so I must open them and find out find out credentials in the file like hashes, all of that. Now let's take a look. What do I have now? So if I go to what what was detected. If I go to Defender and open Incidents, and in one day, uh, so multi-stage incident, uh, multi-stage incident. So let's see. Um, let's see. At this moment, um, three uh, three attacks were detected. Um, also, if I go to the previous one, do we have anything from here? Any updated? So um, let me go back for a moment. 
Um, that's 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 like Excel. Not really sure what do we have. Maybe we maybe it's maybe we should wait more, or maybe because I showed the same demo uh, yesterday. Um, so let me switch to incident I create yesterday. Um, and let's take a look. So um, it starts somewhere here when suspicious behavior of Excel was observed, and then I got the reverse shell. So program includes reverse shell was detected. Uh, then um, it uh, so my my reverse shell based on PowerShell, and so it says suspicious partial command line and office application around suspicious, suspicious command. So from different perspective, it tells me that something bad uh, was executed. Um, and so it stops somewhere here. So where I got a shell from Excel, and you know I have many I have many alerts from different sensors and from different perspectives. Now. After that, I start my discovery and like group discovery. Um, so permissions, uh, suspicious permissions group discovery, suspicious system owner user discovery. Also, when I when I run all those commands, it may say, hey, that's that's the weird sequence. And it see like a suspicious sequence. Uh, next one. Not sure what it is, but I can check. What it is scraped. Mm, ah, so because I, I I show this demo pretty quickly, sometimes the timeline may not be perfect, and um, it shows me uh, my script. Where is that? Uh, my script slightly um, in a different sequence. Uh, but again, because there is a very small uh, time time gap between the between my between my commands, uh, that's why it may be uh, it may it may be a bit confusing. So a couple of seconds difference. So then you can see here network discovery, possible attempt to discover groups and, and permissions. So that's the same like here. Uh, network connection discovery because I tried to connect to discover IP configuration, um, ARP table routes. Uh, sensitive information lookup when I'm trying to find pass for passwords. So passwords seen from files, possible possible theft of passwords and other sensitive information from browser, uh, registry queried for passwords. So all of that was detected. Let's take a look. What is here? Oh, here we have, already have nine. You can see here, you, you saw that was three uh, like a minute ago. Now it's nine. So it, it detects more and more based on the analysis that will that that sent to the workstation. Um, so, and look at this: suspicious LSAT service, process memory dump, sensitive credential memory read. So probably because again, because I showed the same demo just less than a day ago, looks like it just uh, sent me to the previous incident that's still in progress. But new things that I generate, uh, they are detected. So, um, like like that, uh, Elsa Elsa service cross memory dump. Uh, let's click let, and uh, that's that's that was the detection. Let me click on that and see uh, what behind the scenes. Um, oh, I can see all of this in the timeline right now. Uh, just I don't see the new detection appeared because again I, I did the same. Uh, just yesterday, uh, but it sees what uh, uh, it 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 see that the, the the history and who am I? All of this, yeah. And finally, process memory dump. So after my, uh, I can see all of this reconnaissance. Who am I? Um, and um, my command to what is that? Oh, when I download the process dump, that was suspicious. Uh, so suspicious file was observed when they download process dump uh, to to dump the process. And look with this command, I dumped the process, and that process was Elsa's, which is sensitive process, and credentials are stored in this process. So all of that, all of this, all of this uh, kill chain was detected. Uh, Give me a moment. I'm gonna. Um, 
This is great because it really talks. We've um, spent a lot of time talking about Defender for Run Business. So these capabilities are all within that Defender for Business that we're rolling out to the SMB space. So yeah, um, and all of that, all of that was detected. O almost everything, all, all the steps was detected. Uh, the, almost all the steps, they were detected. Um, all right, so um, that's what I plan to show you, even more than I, I planned. Um, and uh, are, you, are you fine to handle questions to yourself, Paul? Um, yeah, oh, I'm all good. Um, with the McAfee that you had on there, um, did we get any detections from McAfee? Uh, uh, say again about McAfee? You had McAfee um, on that uh, at yep. the uh, station you were attacking. Did that yep. um, give us anything? Uh, um, let's see. Mm, nothing. Let's see history. Uh, um, no, nothing. Oh, I think it should tell something. Where it tells something. My protection. Nope. It we didn't, didn't pre-organize that, so we were, we were yeah. not uh, showing off how bad uh, particular, but it's the difference between AV and advanced threat protection, I think, is is the, the point that we're ma making here. Um, yeah. So, so you're, when you're looking at replacing an AV with Defender for Business, a uh, standalone, um, it's not apples for apples. You are going next level defense. The only one thing I want to show that there is no exclusions. So AV is so real time scan turn on and there are no exclusions. So of course my demo is configured like like to, to bypass that that AV. Uh, I use the things that will not be detected by 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 this antivirus. But but yeah, it wasn't detected by antivirus, but it was uh, detected by EDR solution. Yeah, it was interesting the way that you rolled back the signatures on the uh, defender on the endpoint. Yeah, if if I have permissions to if I have full full privileges on the machine, I can just kick out um, all of the signatures and yeah, AV for for before the next update, AV becomes useless. Is that even with tamper protection on? Um, so uh, it is because you just it's it's a legit way to roll back the signatures. Um, so if you're administrator, you can do it. Um, you can do it. Absolutely brilliant. Thanks for that. And I'll, I'll let you jump onto your uh, next um, call. So yeah. once again, you know, big thanks. Um, Search and I'll I'll email you the uh, link to the recording. Thank you very much and good luck with your presentation. Maybe, maybe see you next time. Bye bye. Yep. Okay. Thanks, Serge. Let's bring up uh, uh, slides to finish off. So cool. I hope uh, you guys got heaps out of that um, and grasping exactly what goes on on the. Uh, minds of uh, people doing pen testing or um, people acting maliciously. Uh, it hasn't gone and resumed. Let's um, jump forward. So upcoming slides um, next week, Office of the Privacy Commissioner, um, Delta Insurance, and then we'll wrap it all up with uh, post Inspire events. So if anybody, oh, the giveaways. Uh, let me just uh, choose a couple of people from there. Uh, Luke and Craig. If you want to just flick through an email to onpoint at dickadata.co.nz with delivery addresses, I will get a coffee mug and apron out to you. Um, YouTube. Stuff is still up there on the official Dickadata uh, channel, and we'll be putting posting this up there. I will also post an external link into the chat post call. But I am conscious that we are now five minutes over. So thank you all. If you have any questions, I will turn off the recording uh, shortly. So ask questions in the chat or um, come off mute and ask away, and I'll do my best. <laughs>